as we look at this. Again, what we begin to think that uh, uh, sin being something that is ugly, sin that is something that is nasty, sin that is something that is undesirable. When you begin talking about uh, 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 sins, when you flip over into First John, what we had a, a few weeks ago, what Jason's been teaching on, you talk about the lust of the eyes, the uh, uh, the, the, the pride of life, uh, uh, just things that we have, and uh, uh, you know, you, you you talk about the love of money and, and wealth and fame and fortune and all these things. Uh, uh, those things are sin. We don't always think that those are ugly. Nobody's going to look at a, a, a giant pile of dead presidents and think, oh, that's hideous. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm talking about money. I'm talking about money, that's what we're talking about. You're not going to see that stack of green and think, oh, that's awful. But we can look at uh, different places. We can see where uh, with great wealth and riches and things like that, that there can be uh, bad that come from it. Uh, let's not go there. Let's not go that direction this morning. I just want you to help you to see that uh, that, that not all sin is, uh, uh, you, you know, some uh, a drunkard or drug addict that's laying in an alley with a needle in their arm and nothing. I want us to understand that there's more things that, 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 that really are, 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 are sin and uh, uh, they, they look nice. It's not all awful. Stay with me. There's one portion in here that we want to look at that says some of the seeds fell out amongst the thorns and the thorns sprung up and they took it over. Anybody like a briar patch? Nope, sure don't, do we? Why? They tear up our nice clothes, don't they? They hurt when you walk through them. You get tied up in them. Paul and Bubba used to make fun of me when we go rabbit hunting because I wouldn't walk in them. They'd always say, you can't jump rabbits out in the field. And I think, nope, but I ain't going to get tore up in a bar patch either. And they'd come out and their hands would be bleeding, their ears are bleeding, they got stuck everywhere. I was in good shape. I had no desire to walk through the briars. Nobody else does either, do we? You will stand and you will look at the thicket and you will try to find the path of least resistance to go around it. You don't want to be in the midst of it. Because the briars, they will come up and uh, uh, they will take over if you ain't careful. They can take over a field. They can take over a spot because of these thorns. You, you look at these things and we can know that that is undesirable. And we know that because that's just a bunch of thorns. Ain't nothing more undesirable than a field full of thistles, is they say this. Pa will drop you off and say, I'll be back in a few hours. And he gives you a mattock and you think, what am I supposed to do with this? And then he shows you and then you're like, hmm. Oh, happy day. Things like that are unpleasant to the eye. We know that. We can see that. We know that we want to stay away from it. The thorns. Easy to see in our life. Hey, we know that we shouldn't be addicted to, uh, uh, to, to uh, 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 any kind of substances that, that alters our mind. Alcohol, drugs, things like that. Hey, we know that. Hey, we know we shouldn't spend hours on the internet looking at pornography. We know that don't we? We know that that's not things that we should be doing. We know that we shouldn't be uh, 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 chasing uh, uh, if we are married men or women. We shouldn't be chasing after other men or women. Hey, we know those things. Those are the thorns. That's the things that we know, right? That's the ugly part of sin. We know that we shouldn't lie, cheat, and steal, don't we? Those are the thorns. Those are the things that we can see. Y'all with me today? Everybody awake? No? Ashley, I might need you and Mama and, and Mindy and some of the other nurses to walk around and check pulses, make sure people's alive. I kind of think people may have passed while we're sitting here. We can see the ugly side of sin, but there is also another side of sin that can kind of look a little bit pleasant. How many guys ever planted a garden? Not a, okay. A few planted a garden. What about a flower bed? Anybody will just plant flowers to make your house look pretty? Yeah? Hey, we've done that, don't we? You know, there's some flowers that you can plant that will absolutely take over your flower bed. You just like planting a few of them because they're pretty, and before you know it, they have taken over everything, and all the other flowers that you like, you know what's going to happen to them? They're going to die out. 
They get taken over. But they got taken over by a flyer, and a flyer is something that is pretty and you desire. Amen? Paul gave us some flyers one time. I'm trying to think what they was. They was a little bit blue flyers. I planted them in one spot in a flower bed that was over here. But they took over the whole flower bed that was over here. A blue thing. I'm going to think they was, I don't know what they was. They was blue. It's all I can tell you. I would eat them things down every year. Hate them. I wish they'd never give them to me. I wish they never planted them. That's all they do is they just take it over. I got these uh, one little flowers that I really like. It's called an Asiatic lily. Man, them things are pretty. They come out and they only bloom once a year. They come out and ours has a big, it, it starts out with a kind of a yellow and comes into an orange and then into a, a, a red petals that come out on it. Man, they are pretty, but they only bloom once. And them dadgum flowers, they come out and they take over the things and uh, they don't have many blooms on them anymore because they can't grow. Because there's another flower that's pretty and is attractive that grows up and takes over the whole dead gum flower bed. But it's flowers. And flowers are pretty. And flowers is something that we desired. Flowers is something that we had and that we planted. Huh. You know, you can have some wild flowers come up in your garden, too. Wild flowers come up. Hey, they, they're pretty. If it was weeds, if it's that old Johnson grass, we'd yank that stuff up, wouldn't we? But sometimes there's some uh, uh, flyers that'll come up and they're kind of pretty. You thought, well, you know, it, it, it's, it, it's a flyer. It's kind of pretty. It kind of looks pretty around the edge of the garden. Let's let them things grow. <coughs> then you ain't got no squash. You ain't got no cucumbers. Your tomatoes can't grow. You got these pretty little flyers going all through your rows of corn. You know what I'm talking about? But it's pretty, though, wasn't it? It's pleasant. How many wildflowers you got growing in your life? That's what I'm asking you. Let's get to the point. Let's get to the meat and potatoes. We ain't got to sit here all day discussing this topic. We can hop right into it. We can see sin as being the ugly thorns, and we can all know what the thorns are. We all know what our thorns are that are in our lives that we don't want, that we don't desire, things that we want to steer away from, but sometimes there's some wildflowers that will grow, and we think, hey, that's pretty. But friend, it will choke you down. It will prohibit you from growing, and then it may not be entirely wrong. You know what's unique about being flesh? We're all the same, but we're all different. Amen. What is a huge temptation to me, a huge problem to me, may be nothing to someone else. Because we are not all, uh, we're all tempted in the same kind of ways with the same effects, the, the, the same environmental things that we see. But at different stages in our lives, they will affect us in a different way. What might start out as a flower today, friend, can grow into being a thorn tomorrow. And before you know it, all these pretty little flowers that's going to turn into thorns, you know what eventually you've got? You've got a briar patch. Amen. But it started out looking pretty. The field there at the house. In about late May... There is no grass in that field. All they is is a bunch of yellow flowers. I ain't got a clue what they are, but they're all yellow. The kids ride their side by side through there. You walk through there with your pants, your boots, whatever. When you come out of the field, guess what the, the lower half of you is? Yellow. People drive by and I'll say, hey, that, all them flowers out there in your field, them things sure are pretty. Them things, them things are a nuisance. When they bloom and I can't breathe outside. I can't go out there. I can't enjoy nothing out there because all the pollen, it, it just clogs me up. All the kids have allergies. They can't enjoy it. It is a nuisance. Hey, let, let, let me hit something else with you. We can all understand this. How many people have a yard? Anybody here got a yard? Anybody here like to mow your yard? Anybody like for your yard to look pretty? You know, there's a certain time of year that my yard really looks pretty, and that's the time when the crabgrass is a-growing. 
my yard contains about this much fescue, about this much clover, the rest of it's crabgrass. And when you hit about, after about mid-June through August, my yard is pretty. That crabgrass, man, it's green and it's thick. Early spring, getting into this time of year in the fall, my yard looks like a mangy mutt. There's some grass that grows over here. There's some over here. The rest of it's brown. Nasty looking. It's ugly. But it's only pleasant for a time. How many people want to sow crabgrass all up in your yard? Ain't nobody ever goes to co op and buys a sack full of crabgrass, is they, man? You want fescue. You want the stuff that is going to, that, 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 that is good, that's going to last. And when you sow it, you work up your yard, you do these things, you make sure that it's going to fall on a fertile ground. You guys understand all these points that we are trying to make. Friend, as you being a cold-hearted, uh, you know, a uh, uh, hard-headed, uh, 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 stony person, no matter what God throws at you, no matter what He tries to sow, you ain't going to let it grow. You've already got too much stuff growing in your garden. You're covered up with all the wildflowers. You all worried about the, the, the thorns over here, but you don't care about the wildflowers, the things that look pleasant at the time. You, ju you judge your yard based on the middle of summer when your crabgrass is in. Friend, our lives is a yearly process. You can't say, well, my life looks good for just a portion right now. God's not going to judge you after a freshly mowed yard in July. You drive by my house and it's good and green then. Thick. I almost got to mow it twice. What's your yard look like year round? What's your yard look like in the early spring? What's it look like in the late fall? Do you work it? you fertilize it? You take care of it? Do we do these things? Hey, I'm not talking about your yard anymore. I'm talking about your spiritual well-being. I'm talking about the fact, are we content in just knowing what the thorns are and leaving everything else? Are you only worried about the big, the major sins that are in our life? Or, or do we ever concern ourselves with the things that ain't so bad but will drown everything else out? You can start making some more sense of it. Let's start looking at some of those things. Internet's bigger now than it's ever been. Is the internet bad? No. There's good things on the internet. Is there bad things on the internet? Yes. Is having social media bad? No. Is there good things on it? Yeah. Is there bad things too? Yeah. Wildflowers. When they start growing up and overtaking all you Christian aspects of your life, guess what they're becoming? They're becoming thorns. But just on the face value, there's nothing wrong with social media. There's nothing wrong with a Twitter account. There ain't nothing wrong with a Facebook. There ain't nothing wrong with this. There ain't nothing wrong with that. Face value, there's nothing wrong with it until it takes over your entire life, until it chokes out everything else until you are no longer able to grow anything spiritually, hey, then it's a problem. It's no longer wildflowers at that point. It is thorns, and it is choking out what God has sown. It is choking out the foundation that Jason spoke on this morning. The only thing that we can build on, you can't allow anything else to come in as building material. If it's not the gospel, if it's not the Bible, if it's not of God, you can't use it. There's nothing wrong with your phone. There's nothing wrong with your TV. There's nothing wrong with, the, uh, with sports. There's nothing wrong with this and, and that and the different things. There's nothing wrong with your job. There's nothing wrong with this. There's not, nothing wrong with working two jobs. Hey, there ain't nothing wrong with working three jobs. But when those jobs become your life, when they become your idols, when they become this, when they become that, when your love for everything else replaces your love for God, friend, it is then a problem. If you know it's wrong, yet you do it anyways, that is a problem.
Well, let me tell you what we do. We take our wildflowers. When they start getting big, you know what we'll do? We'll just drive over them with the mower. We'll just chop them down. Ain't no big deal. I can keep doing this. I can let them grow. Ain't no big deal. I can jump on my mower. I can drop the deck and I can roll right over them and nobody will know these there. But you know what you probably just did? You probably just scattered them seeds everywhere and they're going to come back even thicker next year. Anybody ever just had one dandelion in your yard? Well, you knew good till it turns white on top, can't you? You walk through there and kick it with your foot, and them little white things go everywhere. And kids walk through, pick them, and blow on them. You know what they're doing? They're spreading the seeds. You know what you're going to do? You're going to have a heap more dandelions. But you can't see it, though, can you? Kick it down. Pick it up. Drive over it with the mower. Spread them. You can't hide your wildflowers. They will come back. You can't hide those things. You know what you got to do with them? You want to get rid of dandelions? Get this. You either spray it or you dig them up. You want me to tell you what you got to do with all the sin in your life? You can't just hide it. You can't just do away with it at this time and do away with it this time. Bring it out when you need it. It's not your Christmas tree. You can't put it up in your closet and get it out when you need it and it's hid. That's not what it is like. You have to repent. You have to turn away from. You can no longer just hide these things because it will come back and they always come back thicker. It comes back in more. It comes back with more abundance. Because we, as, a, as Christian people, we have got to the point that we're just okay with it. I understand that this is sin, but it's a pretty sin. I understand, preacher, that I have a problem with this. But I'm not walking around staggering around drunks, a thick tongue that nobody can understand what I'm saying. It's a sin that only I know about. For now. Let me caution you there, Christian. Because Jesus, did he not say... That whatever we say on the dark, that we whisper in the ear in a closet, that will be brought out and made known to everybody what the deeds that we do in darkness will be brought into the light. Does he not say that? How long are you going to hide it? How long are you going to pretend that those wildflowers are on purpose and that you meant for them to be there? How long are we content with just allowing things to take over our life? Let me tell you what one of the biggest wildflowers that we can have. Oh, be careful now. Be careful, I'll make people mad. It can be your husband, it can be your wife, and it can be your kids. Oh, preacher, I gotta take care of them. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. But they don't come before God either. Amen. Hmm. Preacher, easy now, you're gonna offend me, you're gonna hurt my feelings. Hey, I'm a telling you, I'm a warning you this day. I'm telling you truth that comes from within the Word of God. I am just, just being a good friend here and saying if you ain't careful, even the precious things that God has given you will become your idols. Preacher, I, I mean, I gotta have money to live. I gotta have my job. Don't worship it. Do we not know that God knows what things we have need of before we ask? Do we not know that Jesus says that He will supply what we need? Amen. You know, sometimes we would have to work two and three jobs if we didn't try to give our kids three times what we had when we was growing up. Hey, guilty. I ain't going to sit here and lay the blame off on you. I'm going to raise my hand and say guilty. You can buy them all their expensive stuff. You know what my kids are going to play with anyways? Probably something that we meant to throw in the trash. They'll play with a bag. They'll play with a stick. 
Jaylee got mad at me here a while back because she had two little sticks that she was playing with one day when we went riding down uh, in behind Michael's and she gave one of them a name. She wanted to bring these two sticks. Sticks! Sticks! She wanted to bring these two sticks home. She named them and I threw them out and she was mad at me for three hours over it. You walk into her room and there's no telling how much money we've spent on junk that she don't even like and she wanted a stick. What I'm telling you is is you can allow all these wildflowers to be there. You can choose them. But they will eventually be a thorn. They will eventually be unpleasant. They will eventually choke everything out that you have to where you don't know if you're coming or going. You'll sit here and say, well... I used to live for God. I used to put God first. I don't know what happened. I mean, there was a time that, you know, prayer was important in our house. There was a time that prayer was this. There was a time that a uh, 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 quiet time, you know, just, just us sitting around the table. Just us. There wasn't was nothing else. You know, there was a time that these things was important and, I, I don't know what happened. I'll tell you what happened. You allowed your wildflowers to take over your garden. People can be wildflowers too. They can be bad influences on you. They can encourage the, uh, the wrong kind of behavior. I'm just telling you, Christian, you know, the Bible says the way of the transgressor is hard. Make no mistake about it. It's hard to live a Christian life, too. That's no easy task. Because you've got to constantly be self-aware of your surroundings, what's going on. You have to constantly be evaluating and reevaluating your priorities. You have to know what's coming first. And friend, if anything is on number one other than God, then you're in the wrong. No matter what that is. Verses 7 and 8 there, it says, Some fell among thorns, and the thorns sprung up and choked them out. But others fell into good ground and brought forth fruit. Friend, you cannot be fruitful unless you are going to be good ground. Sometimes, what's that old saying that we say, when it rains, it pours? Sometimes you need a pouring rain to wash everything away. Sometimes it's been dry for so long that the ground gets hard as a rock. It's like concrete. Sometimes you need a good soaking rain to loosen it up, don't you? Don't complain about the storm that's going on in your life. Maybe it's washing something away that don't need to be there. Maybe it's allowing your grass to grow. Maybe it's drowning your wildflowers. Who knows? I just want to tell you, God knows. God knows why it's there. God knows why you're going through it. Others fell on the good ground and brought forth fruit, and some a hundredfold, some sixtyfold, some thirtyfold. Then he says, Who hath ears to hear, let him hear. You hear what God's saying to you today? Can you block out all the excuses that we're making? 